Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus tells his disciples in tonight's reading that he eagerly desires to eat this meal with them. Jesus was a good Jew, as were his disciples, and so they were gathered together for this Passover meal, one of the most important holy days in all of Judaism. And Jesus is eager to sit down with his friends because he knows that it will be a special meal. It will be a meal that changes their lives. Here we are 2,000 years later, and Jesus is still eager to share the meal with us. He is still willing to break bread with those who love him and who follow him, with those who deny that they know him, with those who have betrayed him. Jesus is eager still to give himself to us, imperfect people, so that we may get a taste of perfection. Jesus knows this is a special meal. He knows it will change our lives as well. I'm so pleased that we here at United Lutheran and at Bethlehem and Emmanuel before this share the Lord's Supper each and every week. I remember when I was a kid growing up at Arlington Hills Lutheran, we only had communion on the first and third Sundays of the month. But throughout the church around the world, there has been this revitalization of communion's central place in worship. Some people used to say, well, it wouldn't be so special if we had it too often, as if too much Jesus could be a bad thing. <laughs> we wouldn't think, gee, I better not tell my kids that I love them too many times, or they might not think it's special anymore. No, we want our kids to know over and over again of our love, how special they really are. It's the same with Eucharist. We can never grow weary of being welcomed the Lord's table. It's a great privilege for me each and every week to distribute communion to all of you. At this table we are fed with the true body and blood of our Lord and it is pure gift. Nothing that we deserve. And I love sharing it with you because when I watch you come forward when I watch you kneeling in prayer, when you open your hands they get filled with God. We know at the Last Supper, Jesus was joined by some brothers. His disciples, James and John, were brothers, as were Simon Peter and Andrew. I love it when I get to see families here at the rail together. Sometimes it's all young parents can do to keep their little ones attentive when they come forward. Over the years, I've taught communion classes for many of our kids, and when I see them come forward ready to receive communion, I get such a kick out of that. I see families with older kids, especially maybe middle schoolers or high schoolers, that sometimes there might be some kind of a family argument going on. Maybe the moody kid said something that they shouldn't have. Maybe a moody parent jumped to a conclusion. There's tension in families. But still, when families come to this table of mercy. All of them are given God's grace. This congregation is made up of many extended families as well, right? Lots of um, adult siblings even that are here. It's taking me a while to figure out how everyone's related and what last name is attached to who and how all that works. Aunts and uncles, cousins, in-laws, outlaws. I think I've got most of it figured out. And so when I see sisters come to the rail in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, I marvel at how this meal is still central to their lives over many years. We can see generations that come to this rail. Grandparents and their children and their grandchildren and maybe beyond. We know that at the Last Supper, Jesus was joined by some people who were outsiders. For some reason or another, there was Simon the Zealot. He was politically charged, and he was looking to overthrow the current government. There was Matthew, the tax collector. He was hated by his own people. 
because he was a Jew who was taking money from his fellow Jews and giving it to a foreign government. I know that in this congregation, there are some of you who feel like outsiders. You're the kind of person that goes against the grain of the world. Maybe you even speak out against the world. And yet, at the Lord's table, you are welcome. You are no better or no worse than anyone else. In God's eyes, you are worthy. We know at the Last Supper, Jesus was joined by his disciple Thomas. He was a disciple who had a hard time believing. He needed lots of proof. There are some here who struggle with faith. How can this story that's 2,000 years old possibly have any meaning today? Is it real? Does it matter? I want proof, some people say. Jesus welcomes you to the table. We know at the Last Supper, Jesus was joined by a man who was about to deny him three times, and by another man who was about to betray him into the hands of people who would put him to death. Over the years, people have been fed by God's outrageous gift who have then gone out into the world and denied that they have anything to do with church. Over the years, people have received unconditional love at this meal and still done things that have worked against the mission of the church. Even some of you might deny or betray our Lord. And yet you're welcome here at the table. All of you, all of us, everyone is welcome because Jesus is eager to share this meal. He's eager to give himself to us. When Jesus met with his disciples for that Passover meal, he changed the meaning. The Passover meal was in remembrance of that tenth plague. We read about it earlier this evening. The angel of death passing through Egypt, killing the firstborn people, livestock. But the Jews were able to escape this plague. Death passed over their houses because of the blood of the lambs that they put on their doorposts. And so every year, Jews remember the Passover by sharing the meal. Jesus was eager to share this meal because he becomes that sacrificial lamb. It's through his blood that death passes us over. The power of sin and death and the devil no longer hold us in captivity because of Jesus' sacrifice. When we gather at this table tonight, when we eat Jesus' body, drink Jesus' blood, our sins are passed over. In this meal, we find newness of life. And it's for everyone. For families, for the lonely, for the forgotten, for the rabble-rousers and the mischievous. Jesus welcomes all to this meal because he gives his life for all. My prayer tonight is that you, whoever you are and whatever you've done or left undone, you find welcome at the table and you are filled with the very presence of Jesus so that you may live a new life.